What's going on gamers? Today we're going to go over everything you need to know about Minecraft server optimization. One of the biggest concerns for server owners is lag, and lag can have a variety of causes, whether it's from resources you add to your server or the hardware your server runs on. You can get plugins that can help reduce the lag, you can upgrade your server RAM, switch your jar to a more optimized version of Minecraft, optimize files, and more, but with all of these options, you might be wondering what causes lag and what you should do to get rid of it. As for the types of lag, we have server lag through ticks per second. Overall server performance is represented by its TPS or ticks per second. A server's TPS is like a heartbeat. Your server beats at a fixed rate of 20 ticks per second, so one tick every 0.05 seconds. On each tick, various aspects of the server advance a little bit. Mobs move, grass grows, animals spawn, and almost everything else that happens on the server relies on these ticks. When at peak performance, 20 TPS, you'll experience normal gameplay without any server-side lag. But if your server's TPS starts to drop, you'll start to notice lag while you play. What occurs on the server as well as the hardware it's running on plays an important role in determining the server's TPS. When adding mods or plugins, you should always be thinking about the long-term effects of your choices. Many new server owners assume that the number of people on their server will be the only thing that determines their performance. While the number of players on the server does have an effect, it is relatively small compared to the impact of redstone machines, mob farms, or mods and plugins. We also have client lag with frames per second. Having low FPS will generally come with your game running slowly. Having a low frame rate on your server doesn't mean that the server is lagging, but that your computer is failing to keep up with the game. If you do have a consistent low frame rate on your PC, you're going to most likely need to adjust your game settings, update your drivers, or upgrade the graphics card, RAM, or CPU. It is very important that you know that there is a difference between server lag and low frames per second. There are times that low FPS and server lag can appear at the same time, but low FPS is almost always a separate issue with the device you're running the game on. That being said, there are a couple ways to fix low FPS without having to upgrade your hardware. In Minecraft, you can go to the video settings and reduce all of the functions. For example, you can turn off clouds so that your computer doesn't have to try to render them. It's also a good idea to close other processes running in the background that you don't need while playing the game. Another option is to switch to the high performance plan in your device's power settings. If you're on a Windows PC, you can do this by pressing the Windows key and X to open a new context menu. Then choose power options to open up your settings and change the power mode to best performance. We also have connection lag through the ping. Ping refers to the network latency between your game and your server. This reflects how long in milliseconds data takes to process and travel. If you have a high ping, it's possible that your connection to the server might time out. Having high ping is not something that's due to lag, but it causes lag. It might also crash the game because of the instability. Having a low ping is best as lower latency provides smoother gameplay. Typically, the further away a server is from your physical location, the greater your ping will be. The best way to minimize this is to move your server to the location closest to you and your players. Some factors that might affect ping include internet connection speed, the quality of a user's internet service provider, issues with the Minecraft server network, and configuration of firewalls. Latency can change depending on the network conditions and the status of the server that you're connecting to. You can test how bad latency will be on a server by pinging the server. This determines how long it will take for the server to receive a message and respond. There are a few ways to test your ping, but we recommend using your command prompt. Open a terminal or command prompt, which you can do with Windows X, and then type ping server IP. The process might take a second to run, but you should see the average ping displayed once it's done. As for finding out where lag might be on the server or what might be causing it, we do have a video explaining the Spark plugin, which will give you everything you need to know on finding what the issue is on your server. Finally, now that you know what kinds of lag you can have, we're going to go over how to fix a laggy server. First, we can do it through removing tick or lag machines. Redstone is a wonderful mechanic, but having too much can absolutely be the cause of lag. The solution for this is to limit the machines and install anti-redstone lag plugins like this one. Otherwise, try not to have too many automated farms, mob grinders, or anything else that would involve complex redstone mechanics. 
A vital step in lag removal can also be pre-generating the world. The best way to do this is with the Chunky plugin, and all you have to do is install the plugin and run the Chunky Radius 5000 command, followed by Chunky Start. This will pre-generate a 5000 block radius around your world spawn. The server will lag heavily while the process is running, but once it's done, your performance will improve dramatically. You can increase the radius as much as you'd like, but we recommend keeping it under 20,000 blocks. Any larger and you could possibly create more lag than you'd be preventing. Another option that is beneficial to reduce on any type of Minecraft server is the view distance from the server properties file. Any number between 6 and 8 should help with optimizing the server without being too detrimental to the gameplay. While changing the view distance, it is also recommended to change the net compression threshold to 64 and the max tick time to negative 1 to improve overall performance. Finally, if you are running spigot or vanilla, we strongly recommend switching to paper. Paper has a large number of optimization and anti-cheat features to provide excellent performance. As for optimizing some of your server profiles, some of the main files you're going to want to modify are Bucket YML, Paper World Defaults YML, and Spigot YML. To use these settings, stop your server from your control panel and then head to FTP File Access and click on the tab that you want to see the settings for. Most of them will be here while paper files are going to be located inside of the config YML first. Once you find the file, click Edit to the right hand side. And once you're done editing, just make sure to click the green Save button and then restart the server for the changes to take effect. Here is a list of some of the settings we recommend for each YML file. Please pause the video when you see your file so that you can really see what each setting is. Finally, changing the base server files is not the only way to reduce or get rid of lag. There are many plugins available created for the sole purpose of reducing lag. If you know which ones to use, you can find that lag can be reduced significantly on your server after installing just a plugin or two. Here is a list of plugins that we recommend most often to our users. These plugins are not guaranteed to completely stop the lag on your server, but they can go a long way to help. One of the most important aspects of owning a server is making sure it's well optimized and lag free. You can't always control the lag they experience client side, but there are plenty of ways to prevent server sided lag. And hopefully this video helped you understand a little bit more how to do that. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.